So today I'm going to make a small machined part, talk about some of the methods and techniques that I use on a daily basis when I'm making machine parts. Now for some people they may say, yeah, it's overkill, you don't need to go through all of that, but good technique on small parts leads to good technique on big parts. So let's begin. Now first thing I like to do is I like to envision a billet. The billet is what the part's going to be machined out of. So Machining, to me, is a subtractive manufacturing form. It's not like an injection molded part where you're injecting plastic into a cavity, or it's not um, a forging or a casting or a sheet metal stamping. So the methods used for machine part are gonna be a little different than they are for the other types of manufacturing. So for this, we start out with a billet. Now, the billet is going to encompass the entire part to some extent. So here, I'm gonna use this bottom footprint as my initial base. Now, I'm gonna go in and create my first sketch. Oh, excuse me, let me insert a body first. Now create my first sketch. This first body is gonna be my billet. And I'm gonna use two bits of geometry. I'm gonna use a circle my center, and I'm going to use what's called a centered rectangle at the center line as well. Now, all I have to do is trim away the material that I don't need, give it some constraints, 1.37 radius, that's one, and for my distance, We'll go to from the center line back out three and a half. Going to exit out and make my initial pad. Now the height of the pad is going to be, as you can see here, to the center line it's 1.37 and then with a radius of 0.75. So that's going to be the total height. So I'll just do that. I'll type in 1.37 plus 0.75. And that's the height. Now that I have my initial billet, I'm going to go in and I'm going to label this as such. Properties and billet. And I'm also going to assign a color for it. So uh, for my billet, I like to use something like a dark green. Now that I have my billet completed, basically completed, I'm just going to add my fillets real quick to this corner and to this corner, 0.37. I'm going to add this body into the part body. I'm going to right mouse click and say add. So this feature now becomes the billet. Now that I have the billet created, the next thing I'm going to create, if I take a look at this, are some of the pockets that I have. Now, for this process, I'm going to create a sketch that is going to, again, mimic a manufacturing process. The way I look at this is I see, okay, we're going to come in and cut out, in this case, this portion. I can use a very large cutter. Let's say if this is a true man, an engineering problem, or NC process, I would use a very large cutter and just one swipe, clean that up, and then come back afterwards, and then another swipe, clean that up. So in this case, I'm going to create this profile to remove. Now, as we can see, I have a radius of 0.75. So this 0.75 radius means that this wall thickness from this back edge to here is going to be important for me to measure, which is going to be one and a half inches. So I'll go in, create my next body. I'm going to insert my position sketch. I want the side view like this. And then for this, pretty straightforward, I'm going to create a rectangle. I'm going to constrain this rectangle. I'm 
the height is going to be 0.37, so from here to here. And then to finish this off, I want to make sure this always remains big. So I'll go ahead and tie in some constraints as such. I'm going to exit out. I'm going to make my initial pad. Mirrored extent. No, I'm not going to use a pocket for this. I'm going to make a pad. And I'm going to eventually use a remove boolean. Now that I have that in there, I put in this little fillet, which is a 37. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create another cutout, per se. And this cutout is going to sit right in here. Now, the way this cutout is going to be positioned is going to be, once again, off of this top. And for that, I'm going to create another sketch. And I'll just use my plane to here. I'm going to use my centered rectangle. And my width on this is going to be 0.125, or 1.25, apologize. And then again, I want to make sure that this always remains large, so I will constrain it in such a way where it's always a little larger than the part. Again, think of this as a machining process. Think of this as a tool that's going to come through and clean that area out. And I'll do the same thing with this. Exit out. And again, make another pad. Now, as you know, I have a certain thickness at the bottom of this that I need to maintain. I just can't start my cutout down here. So what I can do is I can go up to plane for my second limit. By doing that, what happens is, is this first pad controls the depth of both pads. Now that I have my features in, I'm going to assign this, go into properties, and we'll call this NC machine. removals, and then I will again change the color of this, just because I like to see things. Now that I have that in there, actually let's go in, let's go to properties, I'm going to go back here, I'm going to copy this, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply do a remove from the main body. So here we can see all of our machined processes. So now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and finish this off. And as you can see, I have a couple of tritangent fillets, and then I need to put in my hole features. So I'll come in, put in my tritangent fillets, And last but not least are the holes. So I'm going to put in a hole here. Centered about that face to there. I'm just going to say up to last so it always cuts through. And my diameter on that hole is 0.5. And I have another hole here at the bottom. And I'll go ahead and put in the next hole. Pick my top face. I'm going to go into position sketch. And I'm going to position this from here to here. And then I can also position this from there to there. Exit it out. Am I OK? Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my billet, and I'm going to double-click on it, that sketch that drives it, and just simply add in another hole to that sketch to whatever diameter it is I need.
And that way, when I exit out, so this is saying, ah, I have a different one. I made a modification. Remember, I changed this top face because I put in that hole. And that's pretty simple. I can come in here now, and I'm going to go into Tools, Sketch Analysis. I'm going to look at my Use Edges. This intersection is incorrect. So I'll just simply delete that intersection and then reconstrain it. Exit out, and there you have it. Because I went in there and modified this first sketch, a sketch down below was affected. And that's fine so long as you know how to correct the issue. Now, if you don't want to see those kinds of things occur, you can use reference elements. So maybe I could have offset a plane to the height that I wanted and linked my dimensions and my pad and everything to that offset plane, create a little bit more stable model. But in this case, it was an easy fix, not a big deal. And you saw exactly how to fix it. So last thing I would do is I'd clean the tree up a little bit. And there you have how to make a small machine part with some very basic techniques.